Castle Flipper, a medieval crafting building and simulation game by the makers of House Flipper, Pyramid Games. Thanks so much, firstly, to the publishers for sending me a review copy. Much appreciated. So first off, I just want to say they need to sell you this soundtrack as like a standalone purchase because it is awesome. I've got the game minimized while I record this review and kind of do the editing and it's just so relaxing and peaceful. But you're not here for a music review. You're here to know what is Castle Flipper? Is it worth buying? And is it any good? So let's get straight into it. If you've ever played House Flipper before, it is extremely similar, but with medieval castles, cities, and villages. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume that you haven't played that, and this is your first time buying one of these Flipper games. So you start the game with a small plot of land, a small amount of money, and no skills or abilities. You basically get drafted in to help um, repair a ruined camp. Yeah, you basically clean and repair a few buildings in this little camp and put things back together by the bailiff. As you do this, you learn how to renovate, repair, build, and earning, doing so earns you money and increases your skills, which can use to learn new abilities, perks, and increase your, your um, I don't want to say professions, but like the main parts of the, the game, the main things that you can do in the game will improve as you progress. And the money can be spent on unlocking new items or buildings in your personal house. So the flow of the game, you go to the job board, and you work for other people. As the game progresses, this expands out. So you start out, like I said, cleaning, chopping trees, uh, building fences or other menial tasks. The first task is literally all of the above. Um, and as that goes on, you go from these like minor repairs and renovations to literally building castles, cities, repairing pirate ships and some really cool and unique buildings. One of my personal favorites was repairing the pirate ship. That is so cool. Uh, there's another one where you build a trebuchet. That was really cool. I mean, I've, I've never done anything like that in a game so i mean you've played games where you see it like age of empires style but like putting the logs together to build a, a trebuchet was was a really cool touch and you know that's what simulations are for they make you they immerse you in that kind of thing um, another really cool one was like you get to destroy an entire estate you have to destroy like 130 items and then you rebuild it all with your own furniture your own uh, items and you just completely renovate this whole thing it took me like an hour really really cool uh, but that's that's kind of the flow of the game it's all about um, renovating repairing and improving these areas that you go to for your jobs and as you do these jobs your skills increase uh, one of the first skills you'll get is like the ability to detect dirt and then it'll like highlight everything that can be cleaned on the map and that's kind of what all the skills will do they'll, they'll slowly make you better at your job again if you've played house flipper very similar to that uh, and it quickly leads to you mastering these skills, getting better, getting faster, and then you can do the bigger jobs and you can do them better. Other than improving your skills and abilities and getting experience, the main reason you do all these jobs is to get that medieval dollar. So once you've got money, you can use it to take on... So I'll give you a few examples. Once you start making money doing all these like rubbish jobs, basically, the, these, uh, these small laboring jobs, you can start investing that money. You can like go buy plots of lands, build a house on it, and then rent that house out to prospective landlords. Or you can take on huge jobs that require like a huge initial investment. So like, like I said, that renovation, you literally have to build like all the different furniture, which needs a big upfront lump of cash. So yeah, you want to be earning money from the smaller jobs. It's like chests you can find along the way and you can do the jobs better to earn even more money. And that's kind of what you want to be doing in the early game earning these little bits of money and then going all in later on on these big jobs or personally investing in your own buildings to, to rent out. Um, I spent a lot of cash on like upgrading my home plot and then unlocking loads of cool items. Other people might spend it on different things, but I just wanted a huge piece of land that I could just mess around on. And that's pretty much the gameplay loop. You take jobs, invest your money, make more money, upgrade your personal projects or take on these big huge projects you can also head out to the forest or the quarry to harvest resources so you can use instead of making a wood house you can make it with stone things like that and i don't want to say the possibilities are endless because they're not but your creativity can really be pushed to its limits here you can really do a lot more than the game the game will give you the building blocks like lego the game will give you a ton of resources and it's up to you how much you push that if you want to keep it basic and all your houses are just four by four squares you can do that but then you kind of lose the the main beauty of the game which is the allowance of creativity it gives you and you know the things that you can achieve with the resources that you have available 
So let's get into more of the detail of <clears throat> what you actually do, like hands-on, what you're actually doing in the game moment to moment. So you have a selection of abilities by pressing the tab button, and I'll just run through some of them to give you an example. So you can use cleaning to like improve or renovate houses, catch rats and critters to clean dirt, things like that, not very interesting, but very important. I'll show some footage of me just going around cleaning up an area. As you do it, doesn't look enjoyable, but when you look back and see what you've done, it does kind of feel pretty rewarding. Um, you can chop trees for wood and clear the ground for more buildings. Demolishing is literally destroying items. I mentioned earlier where you have to destroy this giant estate. That feels amazing. You literally just level the entire place and just so you can rebuild it. Really, really cool. Um, my personal favorite part was the repairing. So you'll find things like broken down tables and you have to manually put it together. So you put the legs on, you nail them in and then you can use the table. Um, yeah, really cool. I, that's part of the you know, the, the, the beauty of simulation games where you can feel like you're actually doing something um, piece by piece. And that, that's really, really cool. There's a lot of parts like that in the game. I wish there were more from what I've played. I haven't got, you know, to the end. I've played a few hours, but I wish there was more so far. Uh, then there's like building stuff manually. So like you can find uh, parts of parts of a fence and then put that back on the fence you can find wood to build to like rebuild barns and structures or um, on the ship there's like beams laying around and the ship's kind of broken down so you have to find all these beams and then put them back in and repatch the ship up things like that right really cool it doesn't it's not like you know big brain stuff but it is genuinely pretty enjoyable um there's alterations and upgrading to buildings and some other cool and unique stuff depending on the jobs that you're doing the other thing you'll be doing is kind of the, the second side and that's the building and decorating. So rather than using tab to access that that uh, that, that wheel of um, tasks, you can press I to, I think it's I, and you go into uh, kind of like the catalog and you can find all the different building structures and all the different furniture. And that is the part that I less enjoyed. I really enjoyed the manual labor side rather than the open creativity side. Um, the, so yeah, here, here's where I just want to give the only negative I'm going to give here. And that is the, the building is the best and the worst part of the game. So there's unlimited freedom in the game. The quest might say build a house. It must be 20 foundations long and there must be at least 10 bits of furniture. But you can literally just drop all the shit on the floor and pass the mission. If you're just trying to smash through the game, you're going to miss the beauty of the game because it's not a it's not a hardcore challenge. It's an expression of your creativity. So if it says build 20 foundations and six bits of furniture, that's your opportunity to build some giant mansion or some giant castle. It's not let's just do this mission as fast as possible. You're robbing yourself of the real enjoyment in the game. And I found myself doing that quite a lot. Um, you, so, for example, if you if it says redecorate this place with 50 pieces of furniture, you could just go and drop 50 pieces of furniture at the door and technically you've passed that mission but you've 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 not enjoyed the mission if you know what i mean um say you're doing a castle and you have to rebuild the castle you have to refurnish the castle you know logically thinking and to enjoy the game go into the master bedroom and put a giant king bed with like a regal dressing table and chair and other kingly items and then in the smaller rooms make them servants quarters with small beds and like cheap wooden items and then you really turn it into a cool castle and you lose all of that if you just go in and dump a bunch of items, the cheapest items, to get the most amount of money and pass the mission. Um, and the game isn't strict on you. It, I think that's important. It's super important going into this game because I'm a very objective-based person. You know, I come from like MMOs and my objective is always do the game as optimally, min-max it as much as possible and don't find yourself wasting time. And that is not how you should be playing this game to enjoy it. Uh, don't just be looking to beat goals and progress. I found myself cutting corners all the time. And then in hindsight, I regretted it because I just robbed myself of a really cool part of the game. So if you're not a creative person or you just want to plow through a game, I don't think you'll enjoy this, in, in my opinion. But that's just the building and decorating side, which is just kind of half of the game, really. The, the rest of the time you are renovating, repairing and doing more manual things and destroying things. And I could totally get behind that. So who am I to say you won't enjoy it? But I think you need to think about why you're buying the game first if you're looking for it to smash through the game maybe it's not for you if you're looking for it to really enjoy a medieval simulation game this is really good so yeah right sometimes i drone on for a long time this isn't a story or a multiplayer game so i'm not going to go into too much depth you renovate decorate improve and destroy medieval cities castles houses and environments my thoughts on the game are pretty positive i really like the relaxed gameplay loop 
listening to this awesome music, switching off my brain and just watching the areas go from like beaten up trash heaps to these like really cool creations. If you've ever watched those renovation shows on TV, like the, you know, daytime TV, like renovation, renovating houses and stuff, or you even watch like garden renovations or power washing videos, you'll get the same satisfaction from this game and probably even more so because you're, you're doing it yourself. My only real flaw with the game is that it's too open and it's not strict enough on the missions and it wasn't strict enough on me that I kept choosing it and I regret it, <laughs> but that probably comes down to my own impatience. If you've subscribed to my channel, you probably like medieval games, so that box is ticked. If you also like simulation games, I'd highly recommend this. It's 100% worth getting. If you don't if you don't like simulation games, I don't think you'll enjoy it. This isn't. There's no action, combat, strategy. Similar to the last game I covered, Gloria Victus, this is a niche game. If you're not in that niche, it's not for you. If you are in that niche, this is an incredible game that's finally out. Like me, I saw this and I was like, wow, I'm going to really enjoy this. And I did. The game releases today on the 26th of May. It should be out by the time you're watching this video. I've checked the forums and it's set to release at $19 with a 15% discount on release. So if you go get it today, it should be on sale. Uh, don't hold me on that. It's not on their actual Steam page. It's just a, uh, a blog on the forums where they've said that. So answering the questions, right? Is Castle Flipper worth the money? A hundred percent. It's unique, relaxing with tons of gameplay, tons of re replayability. And it is just a delight. It is just such a nice simulation and um, just a nice experience of just express your creativity in these medieval areas. It reminded me of like the Skyrim games where you build your houses and put your armor on show. It, it really is a nice, relaxing simulation game. It's a niche game though, with a niche audience, and I wouldn't recommend this to anyone outside of that niche. If you don't like simulation games, I can't recommend this. If you do like it, it gets my approval and I've had a blast. Other than that, guys, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if this has helped you or you want to see more. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of the game. Other than that, guys, thanks so much. Take care and bye.